I'm on the golf this ferry. It's pretty loud. I'll try to fix this in post and, and cut out some of that background noise. But the boat was actually pulling, or the ferry was pulling out as I was trying to find a place to park. Uh, and they turned around and came back for me because they saw me. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. We're not just going to glaze over what I just said. The ferry left the dock and came back to get me because they saw me. I knew it was a passenger only ferry, so I knew I had to park my car and I was looking for the place to park. It wasn't totally well marked. So I, I saw the ferry and I overshot it. And by the time I came back, I saw a guy coming up the hill in his car. I rolled down my window and I asked the guy, like, where am I supposed to park for the, for the ferry? And he said, the ferry just pulled out. I'm like, oh, this is my one chance to get the Galtis. He said, if you go down there, if you flash your lights, they'll come back for you. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, they will. So I had nothing to lose. I was already there. I went down and flashed my lights. The ferry came back for me. <laughs> the ferry came back for one person. I parked my car, grabbed my camera gear, ran down to the dock. They put up the gangway for me and I got on and nobody was mad. It seemed like <laughs> whatever, something else for them to do, come back and pick me up. But the ferry came back for me. It was gone. It was pulled out <laughs> and it came back for me. <laughs> I don't think this will happen in very many other places, but um, they got me on and I really appreciate them for doing that. Thank you, Galtis Ferry people. <laughs> I'm on my way over to Galtis and I can't believe I'm saying that. It's only a short ride, I think it's about 20 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I'll be there for a couple of hours and just see what the town is all about and see if I can learn a little bit about it. That's the town of Hermitage behind us. That's where we pull out from. And uh, it's a passenger only, fair pa excuse me, passenger and freight. So uh, no cars, no passenger cars allowed. Hermitage is about, probably about 40 minutes from Harbor Brenton. And uh, you kind of just like backtrack up the uh, Highway 360 and then you find, turn off for Hermitage, come back down, kind of like a, a V shape. creating a couple of videos over this road trip that I'm on right now and I find myself saying like over and over again I thought I was giving myself enough time for everything that I'm trying to do right now but I really wish I gave myself a little bit more time like I'm this is like a week-long road trip but uh, I, you know Harbor Breton mind blown like completely not what I was expecting and in, a, in the best possible way now here I am in the town of Galtis. I only got about two hours before the next ferry and I kind of have to get back because I just didn't give myself enough time to do everything I wanted to do. Now to be fair, I don't think I could stay here overnight. I think they, they do have the Galtis Inn which isn't available until the spring, spring through early fall, I think. So I don't think I would have a place to stay here. Um, and there's not a lot, uh, you know, if it got cold, it's not too bad right now, but if it did get cold, I don't know if there'd be a lot of places to go and just warm up, I, although, so far, the few people that I met here seem super friendly, and I'm, I'm sure they wouldn't have a problem letting me come in to warm up if I, if I needed it. But it's actually very calm. I wouldn't say mild, but it's kind of mild. It's, it's above zero degrees right now, so it's not freezing. And um, yeah, I, I got a couple of hours to, to explore this place and just kind of see how big it is, see kind of where this boardwalk leads to, all that kind of stuff. So uh, really, really excited. I just got off the ferry over there about um, 10 minutes ago. So I got about two more hours to just really explore and see what Galtis is all about. The streets aren't paved here. There's, I think, a few vehicles, like service vehicles, maybe fire truck and maybe a handful of service vehicles on in Galtis altogether. Lots of ATVs, quads, things like that to get around. And it looks like all the traffic that I've seen so far today were quads. <laughs> I think maybe I, I went side by side, I saw as well. This is 
is a drinking water station, it looks like, in the town. Check, check, check. Hey, check. So this is Galtis. I'm up kind of at one of the higher points in the town on the side where the, the most of the residents live. There's a name on it. I didn't see it when I was walking around, but I know there's a name. So let's try to find that and I'll put it on the bottom so you can see what the different sides of the, the town are actually called. Down below where the ferry actually docks, there's a couple of houses. There's a few businesses and the post office. And up behind me is basically houses and there's a little park and a big trail that takes you across um, to the other side of this little peninsula here. You might know Galtis because there was, uh, about this time last year, there was a vote to basically decide whether or not they were going, the residents were going to resettle, take uh, government assistance and, and basically resettle from Galtis to wherever they wanted to go. Uh, the vote, this wasn't the first vote that they had and it was actually a no that won. So um, the residents are still here. Uh, unless they want to go on their own, but they're not getting any government assistance if they do that. So um, that's kind of where we stand right now and pretty expected that this won't be the last vote. But for now, anyway, the residents are staying put. Uh, Galtis is, uh, is interesting because Newfoundland's history has, you know, a, a major chapter that dealt with resettlement when Joey Smallwood was premier back, you know, in the earliest days of his, his premiership when, when Canada basically took over Newfoundland when Newfoundland joined Confederation. And a lot of community, there, there was way more communities dotting the coastline than exist right now, and there's still quite a few. But there was um, a lot of communities on the south coast where Galtis is that um, were resettled to Galtis. Galtis actually was what was known as a growth center. And the population boomed back in the 60s and 70s, and it's been steady decline since the 90s that there was a, a fish plant closure, and of course with the cod, um, moratorium just completely shutting down. The, the decline here has been steady. The vote that just took place, there was well under 100 eligible residents who could vote. I believe the number was in the, the high 70s, maybe early 80s. They needed a, a was it a 70% or, it wasn't a, like a 90% majority that they needed to move, but they weren't able to convince 70% or however many it was supposed to be to actually resettle. So that's why people are still here. But this, as I said, this was a growth center in the initial wave of resettlement and now it's experiencing its own, you know, call to resettle again. And a lot of the residents, I can understand it 100%, they don't want to leave. This is where they want to be. So, you know, it's an aging community. There's very few kids. It's, you know, this is just the nature of a town like this. And I... <clears throat> That's the major mode of transportation. I believe there's four children, the last I heard, four children in the school system here. Um, there's not a lot of kids, there's a lot of, you know, aging residents. And they want to stay here and that's you know that's something that I understand completely for some of the younger residents who do want to take the government assistance and resettle there probably will be another opportunity to do that soon enough one of the issues with the town that a lot of uh, the rest of the province is maybe aware of is the uh, the subsidy for the ferry system it's a huge subsidy and people break down the number for the resettlement package. I believe it was $270,000 per eligible resident. And the government figures that with the government subsidy and any other services that are provided, it will pay, the, the resettlement will pay for itself in about 10 years. So, you know, it, it's an expensive town to run for a population of about 100 people. Um, so we'll see, time will tell what's going to happen to this place, but I'm just glad to be able to say that I came here while it was still a town, while it's still managed and, you know, when it's one day abandoned like so many other Newfoundland communities, it's still going to be possible to, to get yourself here and there will be, you know, remnants of, of this town for, for centuries to come, decades for sure. So I'll come back on an adventure one day even if the town isn't a town. But I'm glad to be able to say that I was able to visit while it's still a town because who knows how long that's going to be. Now make no mistake about it, you can see a little bit of snow flying right now. But this is an absolutely beautiful day. I can't believe how lucky I am to, 
be doing this in, in March where you never know what you're going to get. Uh, but there's really very little wind. It's, it's crisp, but it's not cold at all. It's definitely above zero. Uh, the sun is peeking out through those flurry clouds. Like, this is just, I mean, I could ask for more. I got a big day of exploring today, even when I get back over to the other side on the ferry. I'm heading from Galtus over to Blorum. And uh, Blorum, I believe, is, you know, the reason why I'm down here in the first place. Even though Harbor Breton kind of exploded my brain, I can't wait to get over and, and see Blorum. That's gonna be a little easier than getting over here because it is connected by, by a road and I don't think it's very far from here. But if I'm gonna be doing all this exploring outdoors today and I'm dealing with weather like this in mid-March in, <laughs> in Newfoundland, I consider myself a pretty lucky guy right now. A couple of hours in Galtus, it was awesome. Time to get back on the ferry because I don't think the next one's coming for about six hours and I got no food or anything with me. There's not a whole lot of places to go to get a, a snack or as far as I can tell, even a bathroom break. Although people here that I bumped into were super friendly and I'm sure that they would help me out if I needed it. But let's just get back on the ferry and not put anybody out. Thank you, Galtus. This was really awesome. And uh, I'm heading over to Blorum next. But what an experience that was.